Exaro Resources is passionate about water conservation and their excavation and construction efforts focus on storing and reusing processed water and on collecting as much rainwater as possible. Wolfie Jan oversees these water projects, which makes up part of the mine's greater sustainability strategy. Please give us a brief introduction to Grote Geluk. Grote Geluk mine was established in 1975 when ISCO decided to produce coal for their steel making processes. It is not the same as is with other coal mines where you have seams of definite coal and shale. In our case it's all blended. Coal layers are very thin and the shale layers are very thin and we cannot mine it separately. The process used to separate the coal from the shale is a dense medium separation process which employs high quantities of water. By adding magnetite to the water, this dense medium causes the coal to float and the shale to settle out. In this area where we have scarce water, we have been allocated a water license to use 7.6 million cubic meters from the Mokolo Dam. This is all we have and all what Mokolo Dam can provide to us. So for us it's very important that we do whatever we can to conserve water, save it, and then it gives us the opportunity in future to expand our operations. Slime water and storm water are precisely managed on another two locations within the open cast mine. The water from the slimes, the uneconomic material left over after the process, settles out in the slimes pond and is pumped back into the system. Uh, our stormwater system on top of the plant level uh, is divided into two sections, a clean water and a dirty water system. All the dirty water is contained uh, within stormwater channels. It's automatically desilted and the desilted water is pumped back to the plant for reuse, whereas our clean water is diverted into the surrounding environment. In addition to the National Water Act, government issued regulations on the use of water for mining, which stipulates how mines can and should use stormwater. This project is important, firstly to comply with legislation, and secondly to reduce risk during flood events, as mining systems will then also be able to cater for a one in 50 year flood event. In 1975, when the mine was developed, we also had to develop a town and all the associated infrastructure like roads and rail. And with the town development, there was a water treatment built and this plant produces uh, potable water for the municipality. When the town became part of the Lepalale municipality, Exaro continued to operate and maintain the Zealand water treatment works. This facility, which supplies bulk water to the municipality at cost price, is part of Exaro's responsibility towards the community. In recognition of the water quality it produces, it has recently been awarded the prestigious Blue Drop certification from the Department of Water Affairs. So we're busy currently upgrading our pipeline from here, Zealand to town, which is approximately about 40 kilometers of pipeline together with reservoirs and pumping mains. As government, we are spending an amount of 234 million for that project. Now, the benefit to the town is enormous. It's firstly, water security to the community. And secondly, it is to entice development. So we see it as a stimulus both to the economy, to the country, and whatever we're doing here, 49 million people depend on it. Behind you, you see the new power station, and we need to service that as a municipality as well. We're standing next to the section of the Grote Geluk mine where innovative coal screening processes take place as part of the Grote Geluk Madupi expansion project. GMEP is the expansion of the existing Grote Geluk mine infrastructure to facilitate the exclusive supply of coal to the new ESCOM Madupi power station. Its newly constructed processing plant integrates state-of-the-art technology to optimize environmental performance with specific emphasis on water management. On the GMI project, we've managed to reduce our water consumption by looking at our blasting techniques and technology that we're applying, as well as our crushing technology. Uh, our crushers that we're using on this processing plant reduces less fines during crushing. We're also applying dry screening technology where we're actually screening minus 4 millimeter material out of our processing plant. Also in the wet plant, we're applying new technology calling hyperbaric filters, where we reduce our water content within our finds that we do manage to wet. In our stockyard facility, as well as in the processing plant, we are sealing the entire environment. And so any spillages and processing water within our processing plant, we're all recycling that and contain that within our processing facility. We are aligned with Eskom's power station demand, but we will basically be fully commissioned by the end of next year, 2013. The fact 
that we will be one of the first mining operations that will be energy efficiency certified by ESCOM is a good indication of our commitment in terms of uh, not only saving water but also energy efficiency. Exaro employees and their dependents represent an important part of the population of the Waterberg Coalfield area. The company's social commitment is therefore essential to their global vision of sustainability. An example is the Moholo Academy, founded by Exaro, where unemployed youth from the area were trained in brickmaking and business skills. Upon completion of the course, the top performing members were selected to enter into an agreement with Exaro to found a brickmaking factory. This is a youth project and currently employed eight people. We produce uh, at around 2,000 bricks in a day as our daily target. They have a lot of demand for the bricks at Lipalale, so we do supply in the community the bricks that we produce. As, as in the recent past, they've become totally independent of Exaro support. They now run the business on their own and produce about 10,000 uh, bricks per, per week. I think historically sustainability was defined as a business that meets the demands of today without impacting or negatively impacting on businesses of the future and enable them to meet the objectives in the future. We are further refining this broad framework of sustainability taking into account its cross-functional nature which does not only span the areas of safety, health and environment, but also looks at the areas of corporate investment, of community involvement, of community empowerment. And so having said that, our aim is to obtain the most value from our sustainability efforts for all our stakeholders and to incorporate sustainability thinking throughout our total business processes and also include that into our strategy. Obviously, we need to align our corporate sustainability and social responsibility strategies to support that. So even those need to be relevant today and also in the future. We hope you enjoyed a fascinating journey into the world of coal mining here in the beautiful Bushveld in the Limpopo province. We leave the felt now and head out for our next story.